Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Thursday, February 4th, 2021. I am Andrew Hansen alongside Sugar Sheen Caldwell here for our Super Bowl preview from a DFS perspective. Shane, it feels like a long time since we've been on here. It's been a couple weeks since right before those conference championship games. And I need to start out with a thank you because I had a fun win in that conference championship weekend. And I want to uh, thank you here for helping me put that lineup together with your your verbal support on the mm-hmm. podcast for a couple of the key plays. Dawson Knox, the tight end for the Bills, and then Marquez Valdez-Scantling. We've, we've talked about him as a GPP option. So those were two of the key pieces that really helped me take that one down. Yeah, con- congratulations. It seems like forever that two weeks ago, the – the, cha- the conference championship. We talked about how this was our our favorite weekend in NFL and our favorite DFS slate, and it's forever going to be now okay, as you right. got your new nickname uh, that Coach likes to call you, Mister Eighty One K. So, so congratulations, and yeah, that was a that was a monster takedown and awesome strategy uh, that you used there, and it was pretty cool. We talked about a lot of those guys on the on the podcast, how we thought those were great GPP plays. And it, it ends up being the one that takes down the monster lineup of, you know, almost it was like 470,000 lineups or something like that, that you beat out. So it was impressive and amazing, just an awesome win. So congratulations again. And a great, great win for the DFS coach dog team here. Yeah, definitely. It certainly was. And, you know, again, thank you for uh, everything this season. We've done these podcasts for every slate for the whole season. It's been, it's been a grind, but it's been a lot of fun. We thank all the listeners for tuning in and hope you've benefited along the way. But yeah, I mean, it was it was uh, the lineup where I, I made it a point to stack Kansas City. And it's kind of fun that we have them here in the Super Bowl to, to work with again. And so comp- combining uh, Mahomes, Kelsey and Hill and then Daryl Williams, who was I was on as a running back. And then, you know, the, the key final pieces, along with Godwin, the Tampa D, Fournette, who I liked. Were those two guys that, that we mentioned here, Dawson Knox, the tight end for Buffalo against Kansas City. We like that matchup. You talked about it on the podcast. Yep. And then MVS, uh, the GPP option. Um, and, you you know, that's the thing with a short slate. You have to take some risks in a two-game slate, and we're going to talk about it today. Um, but that deep threat uh, against Tampa, um, that was the difference maker when MVS caught that long touchdown pass. And we know the big theme coming into Super Bowl 55 is Tyreek Hill and what he did against Tampa back in week 12. So um, in terms of you know tying it together, what we want to do today is break this game down one team at a time like we always do. We'll start with Kansas City, then we'll go to Tampa Bay. And about halfway through the show, we're going to add some showdown strategy tips on DraftKings and FanDuel to help you get ready for these huge contests because – Hey, we had a we had a great weekend, uh, conference championship weekend. There's no reason why we can't do it again, right, Shane? Absolutely, and I I think that's going to be great to give some tips because this is like the ultimate showdown and showdown strategy. You have to think completely differently than you normally would. You're going to be going up against a ton of lineups. It's only one game, so you got to figure out a creative way to hit hit it big and get different there. And um, I have some kind of contrarian takes here that I'll talk about it with no, this game too. I, I wouldn't expect you, that from you. Yeah, I know you, you definitely <laughs> expect it, but I'm, I'm I'm a little bit contrarian compared to probably the public here. Um, but I have uh, you know information to back that up, and you know uh, you know r- rationale there to back that up. But so it's just a, a, a couple things that could I think listeners will like to consider when it comes to this game here. Looking forward to it. So let's start to break this baby down. Get everybody ready. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun down in Tampa. Again, this is where they played back in week 12. Kansas City won that one 27-24. The Mahomes to Tyreek Hill connection was the story of the game with Hill getting over 200 yards in the first quarter and then finishing with 269 yards and three touchdowns. Tampa made that nice comeback to make it close late. But uh, here we are again in terms of the the betting approach uh, from the big picture. We have another game total here of 56 And the number's been changing a little bit here and there. Uh, But right now on betus.com.pa, our presenting sponsor, Kansas City, three and a half point favorites. And in terms of the injury news right now, it looks like most of the key skill position players are going to play. We're recording this on Thursday afternoon so we could get all the updated practice information. And Sammy Watkins and Le'Veon Bell both had limited practices today. They've been questionable, but it looks like they'll be available. And then on the Tampa side, we have 
uh, Antonio Brown, he got in a full practice. And then uh, Cameron Brake popped up with a little bit of a back issue. He was limited. So that's the only kind of negative trend we've had here recently. And then the other key piece of injury news, of course, is the Kansas City offensive line. They lost their left tackle against Buffalo Fisher, and their right tackle is going to be out as well, short. So a little bit tougher. A question real quick. Is this this yeah. Antonio Brown's first Super Bowl, right? I'm just I was just trying to think of that. I believe it is. I don't think he played with one with the Steelers, did he? I don't Sorry. think he did. I was just I trying to remember that. You're right. I, was, I think it might be his first one, but here's the interesting thing about this game. You have two uh, potentially two of the greatest quarterbacks of all time if Mahomes continues to do what he's doing. You have two of the best tight ends of all time in this game. And Antonio Brown, as much as you might not like him the way he's been lately, he's still one of the best wide receivers of all time in this game. So interesting that the amount of star power in terms of historically and in this game on Sunday. So it's it's huge. Absolutely. And I mean, not to mention Tyree Kill. If he can stay healthy and take advantage of this speed for a few more years, he's going to continue to put up gaudy numbers. So, yeah, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and, And just what a story for Tom Brady. Uh, to make that transition to Tampa and take those guys this far and have a real legit shot to to do it. And we'll get to that uh, to that squad here in a little bit. But let's start with Kansas City, Shane, and uh, give us a little overview here of the strategy you think Kansas City will use, the Tampa Bay weaknesses on defense, if you can find some, and who you think we might want to target from a DFS perspective. Yeah, well, I'll just start right off the get-go with what I think is a little contrarian is I think this game in general is going to go under um, by quite a bit. I think it's going to be, it's not going to be, uh, you know, a super low-scoring game, but I think it's going to be fairly low-scoring compared to what the public is thinking here. Um, I, I think that Tampa Bay's defense is healthy at the right time in matching up good against this potent Kansas City offense. Kansas City, probably one of the best offenses of all time, but it just so happens they lost their, their pretty much their starting right tackle, Mitchell Schwartz, is out, and their left tackle, Eric Fisher, their stud left tackle, is out. So now you don't have any bookend tackles, and you're rotating guards out there and rotating this offensive line. So you got an inexperienced offensive line playing out of position against a really good uh, pass rush, uh, ferocious, fast, and physical Tampa Bay defense. So I don't think it's a great combination for huge upside, and I don't expect to see the same type of game where Kansas City just lights him up right out of the gate uh, with Tyree Kill here. So obviously Mahomes is in play here. He's pretty much a lock for everyone. But if you were building multiple lineups, you could uh, do a couple lineups where you fade Mahomes because there is the uh, the possibility that he gets shut down. If you just look at the, it seems like this is a long time ago, but in the divisional round, you know, Cleveland had kind of shut him down. Now, he did get injured in that game, but even, you know, before the injury, he wasn't doing much. He, you know, he hurt his toe and then he got concussed, but they kind of had shut him down most of the game there. He didn't have a monster game, and that's potential that Tampa Bay can do that and limit Patrick Mahomes. Um, he does that thing where he fades back and kind of goes back and then hits people, uh, hits hits guys deep, but I just don't think he's going to have enough time to fade back that much, and, and I think... Uh, the one thing with Tampa Bay is they have uh, they have all their guys back. Levante David, their other star linebackers out there with White, their other linebacker, they're all healthy now. The safety, Winfield's coming back for Tampa Bay. And then also you have Jamal Dean, who did not play in the first game. And when Jamal Dean, who he's a big corner, but he's fast. He's like a 4-3 speed guy. He's the type of guy that might be able to match up with Tyree Kill and, and run with him a little bit. They didn't have him for that game in Week 12. So Tyree Kill proceeded just to completely roast Carlton Davis on every single play, it seemed like. Yes, right. He did. So he got he just got him real early. But they're gonna game plan, I think, to take Tyree Kill out or at least limit his upside here. And I think Jamal Dean will be a part of that. Sean Murphy Bunning is uh their nickel slot corner. He's one of the hottest corners right now. He's had an interception in every single playoff game. His passer uh coverage rating's way higher than the regular season. So you can't really look at regular season stats. He's picked off, uh, you know, the quarterback every single week, including guys like Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers, you know, which is really hard to pick off. Um, so my point is they're they're playing a lot better and they're going to with the weakness of the offensive line, they're going to put a lot more pressure on them. Um, now, with that being said, I still am interested in Mahomes. I think if you're just making a few lineups, you got to lock him in there. He's still going to get his. It's just not going to be maybe as much upside as we're used to with him. Um, and then from there, my favorite target, obviously, with Mahomes would be Kelsey. 
Um, I think they're going to limit Tyreek Hill a little bit. I'm not saying they're going to shut Tyreek Hill down, but I think they're going to limit his upside. And I think people will be chasing that big game from week 12 without considering all the things that I just talked about. Um, I think there's going to be a lot more short underneath passes. They're going to have to get rid of the ball quick because the pass rush will be bearing down on Mahomes very quickly, especially with the banged up offensive line. So Kelsey plays into that well, the short passes, the run after the catch, the physicality, the good connections on those really quick, you know, in routes and, you know, turn around your curl routes that Kelsey does. I think Kelsey is the mismatch. Tampa Bay's linebackers are not that great in, great in coverage, so I think Kelsey could can really beat their linebackers and safeties, and we'll have a big game here. So that's the guy I like the most. Um, if you're built, I, I like Tyreek Hill. It's just I don't like him if I'm just having to choose one lineup because if you take Mahomes and you try to stack them with Kelsey and Hill, it gets really difficult in terms of salary wise to build the rest of your lineup. And I think Tampa Bay is going to be pretty good. We'll talk about them later. And I think you need to take a balanced approach. If you just go all in on Kansas City because of some of the reasons I discussed, that could be a mistake here. Okay, then we're going to get – I'm going to get in real quick to the running game. The running game is tricky because I know that you've been a big proponent of Daryl Williams, and he's absolutely produced. He's been rock solid, everything he's done. But I kind of felt like at the end of the championship game last week, they were saving uh, CEH, Clyde Edwards, E. Lair. They didn't play him in the fourth quarter, but in the first three quarters, he had a 70% snap share, which means he was the starting running back. He was coming off an injury, and it felt like once they got a big lead on Buffalo and the game was in hand, they knew Darrell Williams was capable of closing it out, which he did did a great job of that. But it felt like they saved CEH and that he would be the starter for most of this the Super Bowl, to, in my opinion, the way, the way that they benched him in the fourth quarter. That was more to limit his chance of getting another injury. So I think CEH is the starter. Now, Darrell Williams will still get some run, but I don't think he's going to get enough volume to produce here. And, of course, it's a terrible matchup now that Tampa Bay has Vita Vea back, both linebackers, brutal matchup against the run. Um, The only way he would get it done, CEH or Darrell Williams, is through the air. But the problem is Mahomes doesn't tend to check down a lot. He's really good at looking down the field and extending plays. So that's why I don't love the running backs. But if I'm taking one running back, it's Clyde Edwards-Hilaire because I think he will be somewhat involved in the passing game and potentially could get a rushing touchdown or a little bit of rushing yards. Um, And then from there, you basically have four uh wide receivers that could all be in the mix for kansas city now that sammy watkins is back you got sammy watkins miko hardman byron pringle and demarcus robinson should be back practicing probably on friday as he was just a a, a covid close contact um my, the thing that's tricky is byron pringle played like 80 percent of the snaps last week um and so it's like you question are they viewing him as more of a full-time starter now um, but I'm still a little skeptical. And Byron Pringle seems to be playing better and getting more targets. He had five targets, you know, 80% snap share. Um, Mikkel Hardman is more like their their situational gadget, big big play guy. Um, but is Tampa Bay going to be able to up uh, be able to limit him there? So I like Mikkel Hardman as like your GPP kind of dart throw. But I don't think he's going to be on the field all the time is the problem. And then Sammy Watkins has played good in the playoffs recently. Uh, you know, whenever he plays in the playoffs. So if he's back healthy, I kind of do like Sammy Watkins for those underneath passes and run after the catch ability. Cause I think they're going to put a ton of resources into try to limit, limit Tyree kill, especially after w- what he did with them last time. Um, and then Demarcus Robinson, the last guy I just wanted to mention Demarcus Robinson is tricky because he might get a higher snap share for the outside receiver because of the fact that Sammy Watkins and Hill play in the slot. They view Robinson as the third outside receiver. And besides, Tyree Kill, he's the most experienced receiver, so they might trust him more in the Super Bowl, and he can get a lot of those underneath crossing routes. So he's super cheap, too. He's the cheapest guy of all of them. So I kind of like Demarcus Robinson as well. So you really have to take your pick there because it's hard to choose, but I would probably rank them right now. I would probably rank them uh, Sammy Watkins if you have the money, and then my favorite minimal price guy is Demarcus Robinson. But again, Pringle and Hardman are in play as well. So, and then uh, real quick before uh, you break down your Kansas City here, I do consider the Kansas City defense when you're playing on DraftKings because they're 2,600, and I think the Kansas City defense is going to get some turnovers and maybe potentially a score here, and they can get uh, special teams 
a la Michael Hardman, those type of guys. They get special teams touchdowns as Tampa Bay is really bad at special teams. So I like the Kansas City defense and the kicker Butker is also in play here. I hate playing kickers, but he's in play because I think, again, if I'm thinking Tampa Bay is going to limit their upside, that means they move the ball, but they have to kick a lot of field goals. In, in this type of offense, he can kick a ton of field goals, so Butker's in play. So that's my really long-winded uh, breakdown of Kansas City there. So I'm interested to get your, get your opinion because there's a lot going on here. Yeah, there is, and that's a lot of great stuff. I'm going to echo some of it, add a couple nuggets here and there. Uh, in general, you know, the, the big guys here, Hill and Kelsey, that's where you have to start your analysis. The way to beat Tampa is with these deep shots with guys like Tyreek Hill or the quick passes to, you know, whether it's Tyreek Hill coming out of the slot or it's Kelsey going over the middle. You know, that's what Kansas City did the first time around. Um, and, you know, if you, if you think about attacking Tampa, um, here's, here's something to keep in mind. They've won every single game since they lost to Kansas City, seven in a row, four straight to close out the regular season. Then they've won three in a row in the playoffs. So they're on a great roll. And I think coaches, they look at all this game film and try to come up with strategy. And no one's been able to beat Tampa lately. No one has done it since the Chiefs did. And remember the week before Kansas City beat them, the Rams beat them. And I think Kansas City used that game plan against Tampa. And what was the game plan that the Rams used? It was it just stood out so much because Goff hit so many short, quick passes to Woods, Cup, and the tight ends. And that's what I think Kansas City is going to do again here. If you actually look at those numbers from that Rams game, it's really um, remarkable, I think, because Cup and Woods combined for 23 catches and 275 yards. They both had over 10 catches each. And then the tight ends, Everett and Higby, they combined for eight catches on nine targets for 46 yards. So it was all night long, short passes, short passes, instead of running the ball. Because Tampa, like you said, it is a brutal matchup. You just can't run against them. Since uh, throughout this season, other than week 17, which is a throwaway game, Tampa has only given up one uh, rushing amount to an individual runner over 60 yards. That was Dalvin Cook. He went over 100. But no one else has even gotten 60 against them. So I don't think Kansas City is going to be looking to run it. Uh, and so I'm not really interested in these Kansas City running backs in, in my primary lineup. And, you know, it, it has been that question of how do we do it with uh, Daryl or CEH? Because historically, the, the lead running back is such an important part of Andy Reid's offense. But here, uh, I'm, just not, I'm just not excited about playing either one of them. It's the second lowest fantasy point total of any team running backs against Tampa. So, you know, it's, it's to me, it's you, maybe if they catch some passes, then they can get involved, but I'm, I'm much more interested in the wide receivers and Kelsey with Hill. I think I'm, I'm a little bit more optimistic with him than you are uh, because I just think it's you know easier said than done that they come up with this new game plan, whether they double him, whatever the case may be. But the problem is Hill, you know, he spends so much time in the slot and he's so elusive and he runs so many different patterns, so many different directions. He gets a step on you and you're finished. So I think I think Hill can still get it done. I'm certainly going to have him in a bunch of lineups. Uh, I do like Kelsey again. Um, so uh, the the next question, like you like you went into, is are you going to get another one of those cheap receivers? Because I'd like to have probably at least two pass catchers from the Chiefs in most lineups. Uh, Kel Kelsey or Hill will be one of them, and, and then who's the second or the third? Uh, out of that group of four that you mentioned, I think my favorite is probably Nicole Hardman. I just love his speed, his talent, his versatility. They got in that carry against Buffalo that he took for 50 yards. You know, they want to get the ball in his hands because he's so explosive. So I like him a little bit better than Watkins just because of the the upside. Um, Pringle is is similar to Hardman. He's that same type of, you know, you can call him a gadget player, but he's so fast. The, and he's so dangerous that a couple of touches and he can take one to the house and be the key difference here in, in a showdown lineup. So Pringles on my radar as well. Robinson to me is like a, a cash game punt almost who, if he's out there starting, he could get, you know, four or five catches for 40 yards. He could sneak into the end zone, but it would be that sort of a, you know, just barely have enough to help you get it done. Uh, whereas these other guys are a bit more explosive. Um, 
so that that's basically it for me. Um, anything else on the Chiefs before we transition to the Bucks? No, I I just think it's going to be it's going to be interesting because if they have, like I said, I'm thinking a little bit lower a dot in terms of the passing game here, uh, so more underneath. So I think it's critical. Like it'll depend on how well. Tampa Bay can rally and, t- and make tackles on these guys like Tyreek Hill and Kelsey and these other weapons because um, the run after the catch is dangerous. But I think they're going to try to limit those deep passes and the pass rush is going to be difficult. So that's why it's going to come down to that short passing game. But like you said, it's a pass funnel defense. So you're going to have a ton of pass volume and you got so many weapons. Eventually, someone's going to break out. I just don't think it's going to be as quite as explosive as you normally see Kansas City. But uh, they will they will figure out a way to get them. But man, that Tampa Bay defense is impressive right now, though. So they they're they're pretty tough. But uh, they really I mean, are. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers had decent production against him. But when it came down to winning the game in the red zone, he Aaron Rodgers could not produce against them. So he had he had great some great plays and put up a huge game. But it wasn't enough to get the job done. So well, this is going to be an awesome matchup. It'll be very yeah. interesting to see. Didn't hurt that they took the ball out of his hands either on fourth down and said, uh, we'll yeah. try to get the ball back and, and never did. So yeah, that was a mistake that I, yeah. I don't think Kansas City make that same mistake. Exactly. Uh, all right, before we get to the Bucks and our showdown strategy, quick break here for a tremendous offer from BetUS. If you're into sports betting along with DFS, check this out. Listen up, sports bettors. It's go time. So put down the beer and make every sporting event more exciting by putting stakes on the line. Earn bragging rights over friends as you rake in the cash from each week's betting action. But don't settle for any other book. Choose America's favorite sports book with over 25 trusted years in the industry. You need a sports book with integrity and longevity. And most importantly, a sports book that pays. BetUS has your game with action on football, baseball, and basketball, MMA, golf, horses, and even esports. No other sports book welcomes newcomers like BetUS with their jaw dropping sign up bonuses. Now we have the best book in the industry teamed up with the best DFS provider in the industry. Make your first deposit of $149 at betus.com.pa with promo code Coach Talk and receive a free membership with DFS Coach Talk with full access to our DFS lineups in NBA, NFL, PGA, and MLB. The best in the biz. Sign up today to make straight bets, future bets, prop bets, entertainment bets, live bets, and more. No other sportsbook in the industry is committed to their users like BetUS. So sign up now and get on the winning side of the ball. Welcome back. And thank you to BetUS for extending that offer to our listeners. It is wonderful. So take advantage of it. If you can make your first deposit there, go to betus.com.pa. Make the deposit for $149. Use that promo code COACHTALK, all one word. And then reach out to us on Twitter. Let us know that you've done that. You can find us at DFS Coach Talk, and then we will invite you into our Discord with an email. And the amazing thing is you get that 149 on BetUS that you get to use, bet on the Super Bowl, Super Bowl props, uh, whatever sport you're into there for, for sports wagering, and you get a free membership with us until April 1st. So we'd love to have you join us and, and get in this weekend so you can get our Super Bowl lineups uh, along with everything else we do. We have, we give out full cash lineups and at least one. I think we'll probably give out at least two GPP lineups for the Super Bowl here on FanDuel that you can just plug and play. And then on DraftKings, we give uh, core plays. We give you recommendations on the captain uh, and, and how else to get your, your lineup built. So um, uh, jump jump on that offer. If you have any questions, also reach out to us on Twitter at DFS Coach Talk. All right, Shane, before we get into Tampa here, let's talk a little strategy in terms of showdown, because this is a unique format, and not uh, not everyone who's listening will have uh, you know spent as much time on showdowns throughout the season. Uh, folks who fo- you know look more at the uh, full slate on Sunday, but uh, give us a thought here uh, that might help folks gain an edge this weekend. Yeah, with the showdowns, are completely different. Uh, you don't just fill up fill up your lineup with what you think are the best guys. You know the most expensive guys that are the best because you're not only competing to score the most points, you're competing with all these other lineups. If you're in a big tournament, you're competing with hundreds of thousands of lineups and there's a lot of duplication here. There's a lot of, a lot of the same lineups. So if you're going in and you're spending almost all your salary, you're almost guaranteed if you do have a win to split it with, you know, potentially thousands of people and your, your windfall would be a lot less. So my strategy here, my advice here, is if you're looking to do a GPP strategy and potentially get a big win and have something unique, is you have to get unique with your lineup, and one way to do that is to leave a ton of salary left over. 
So you have to make some really uncomfortable decisions. So, for example, if you're coming to the end with your last play and you can either play, let's say, Tyree Kill, um, but all of a sudden instead you go down to like Mike Evans, it might be two or three thousand less. Like that's an uncomfortable decision, right? Because you're thinking Tyree Kill is going to just smash and you go down to Mike Evans. Well, th- not that many people are going to make that decision. They're going to see the salary available and they're going to go up to, let's say, like Tyree Kill or Kelsey in that situation. Right. If you went down to Mike Evans instead and let's say Mike Evans had a two touchdown game, which we, he did against them in week 12, by the way. And let's say the other guy that you would have went up to that you that would have made sense to spend. He didn't get a touchdown for some reason. He got shut out. Look at the huge edge you get there. So. My advice is don't be afraid to leave thousands of dollars on the table for salary and and make that uncomfortable move in that unique lineup because that's the only way to get unique. And um, if you want to differentiate, you you could build, if you're building multiple lineups, maybe build a couple where you spend more money and you say, well, if I win, this is my optimal lineup, I'm going to split with a lot of people. And then build a couple unique ones where you get a little bit different or you leave a ton of money on there and you say, if I win on this one, I'm going to have a huge win because I'm not going to split with so many people. Similar to what you did, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, you only split with like six people. So you still had a mega size win, huge win there, as opposed to, you know, splitting. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind there. Just don't be afraid to leave a ton on the salary and make some some strange, uncomfortable things that feel weird to you, <laughs> you know, like going down to, uh, off Tyreek Hill to some other player, for example. So that's my, my best advice on a showdown here. Yeah, that's a great point. And by the way, if you're used to spending almost all your salary in any given contest and you think, well, man, if I leave like twelve hundred on the table, OK, now now I'm getting a little bit risky and uncomfortable because I'm used to spending everything, maybe to save a hundred or two hundred. But that e- that's not even enough on a slate like this. There are going to be thousands and thousands of lineups like that. I mean, we're talking like leave more than five thousand on the table. So it's like extremely uncomfortable. So you're you're making that type of sacrifice like Shane was talking about. That's the type of lineup that could be unique or much more limited. So we're talking thousands on the table to get towards unique. Um, you know, you, you mentioned unique approaches here to, to um, you know, get a more unique lineup. So here's a couple of thoughts. Try different combinations that uh, you don't normally do or think of like – uh, you know, the the lineup I, I won with two weeks ago, I had two tight ends, Dawson Knox and Kelsey. And that's something I've talked about throughout the season on a full slate. Don't be afraid to use two tight ends. Uh, that can be the difference maker. Or on a slate like this, how about two running backs from the same team? That's not something most people normally do. But what if Fournette and uh, Jones here, as we you know talk about Tampa here in a minute, what if they get 10 plus carries each like they did? Uh, against Green Bay last week. Fournette had 12 carries, Jones had 10. And the the running back matchup is one way you can attack Kansas City. So why not try a lineup with both of those guys? That's one way to do it. Or what if you use a couple receivers from one team and the quarterback from the other? That can work. Now, lots of times on DraftKings, if you have a wide receiver or tight end as a captain, you normally want the quarterback paired with him. But um, this is the type of scenario where I think you can go with something like Hill and Kelsey, but not use Mahomes and use Brady. Because on DraftKings with PPR, those guys rack up the points big time with their catches. If they get 10 plus catches, 100 plus yards, all of a sudden get in the end zone, we're talking like 30 fantasy points each. Do you necessarily need to pay up for Mahomes? Maybe not. If all the money you save by paying down to Brady allows you to get a, a better weapon to go along with Brady, that can be enough uh, to, to make a difference and have a, a better overall score. So again, like like Shane's saying, you don't just stack Mahomes, Hill, Kelsey, and then put in a couple cheap guys. Cheap guys. You got to think about the the final score that you're you're putting together with all of your all of your guys. All right, Shane, let's uh, transition into Tampa Bay. Uh, Folks, if you have any questions about any of that strategy, again, feel free to reach out to us. You can get Shane on Twitter at DET Sports Shane. You can find me at Language Olympic. And the coach is available at J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I. All right, uh, Tampa, uh, talk to me here, Shane. They need to uh, come up with a good game plan here down at Raymond James Stadium. 
to keep the ball away from Kansas City and find a way to put up some points. Yeah, I mean, Tampa Bay, I think their offense has by far, especially with the injuries on Kansas City, they have by far the best offensive line in this game. So that does give them an advantage. Um, they've been a little bit shaky in pass protection at times, but they're pretty solid and they're really good at run run blocking as well. So overall, Tampa Bay has a great offensive line. Now, now Kansas City's defense can bring some pressure with Chris Jones and uh, uh, Clark and those guys in there. They, they have a lot of pressure they can put on you. And you've noticed Kansas City's secondary has been really sticky in coverage. I love how uh, Romo was mentioning that, how sticky they were. And, you know, last week's game against Buffalo, they were really good in coverage, very high, highly rated, especially in the playoffs. So it's going to be tough for these guys to get open, but Tampa Bay happens to have some of the best wide receivers in the game uh, at, at uh, Tom Brady's disposal here. So, so I do like the Tampa Bay offense here, and I think this is important. It's important in this slate to have a balanced approach, to have a good exposure to Tampa Bay and Kansas City and not just go all in on Kansas City here. Um, so I think Tom Brady's in play here. Uh, you know, he had a he had a pretty solid game against them uh, last time in uh, week 12. He did throw a couple interceptions. But overall, you know, he looked pretty good. Uh, you know, Anth- uh, Antonio Brown was just kind of getting in the mix at that point, just getting acclimated. So he didn't have as much time with him at that point. But Brady had a solid game. Um, I, so I do like Tom Brady here. It's just a matter if you can fit him if you're playing Mahomes as well. It gets a little bit difficult. Um, and then uh, obviously, if, if you want to pair him, I think uh, Godwin will probably be the number one target in terms of in terms of overall targets over the middle. Um, Kansas City has a Le- Le- Legereus Sneed playing in their slot corner, and he- he's pretty solid, actually, for a rookie. I think he's finally healthy now. He had some injury issues, but he's pretty solid. But he's still a rookie, and it's one of the best slot receivers that Sneed has faced is, is Godwin. So Godwin's looking good, but he is going to be super high-owned as well. I probably prefer Godwin a little bit more in the PPR format, like DraftKings full PPR, because I expect – you know, more short passes to him. But in terms of big playability and red zone threat, I think Mike Evans is the way to go here. So especially if you're looking at FanDuel, he's a little bit cheaper than Godwin. I probably prefer Mike Evans. And they definitely were taking deep shots in that last game against against Kansas City secondary. And they did hit a couple deep, a uh, couple deep shots to Evans, including a touchdown pass, a uh, 30 yard touchdown. And they also hit another another touchdown. It was a red zone uh, pass uh, to Evans. So Evans had a couple touchdowns last time. And I think he's finally healthy with that knee injury. He's been kind of nursing. And so I look for Mike Evans to be ta- targeted often and early and, and more of a big play upside type guy here. So the setting him up with the play action deep pass. So I really like Mike Evans here. And the other thing that I like a lot is the Tampa Bay running game. We were just talking about how you could potentially play two running backs. I think that's in play here. Uh, Tampa Bay has, uh, I think it's a uh, 40 per- uh, 41% run blocking advantage, their offensive line against Kansas City's defensive front. They have a big run blocking advantage. They have really big athletes on their offensive line that, to move people. And they did have some success running the ball in the first game, except for they got down by 17 really early in the game and eventually had to abandon the run game. Now, this game, I think Tampa Bay is going to keep it much closer, so they're not going to have to abandon the run game. And a big part of their game plan is to be pounding the ball and be physical with these running backs. Now, it just so happens that Leonard Fournette has been hot and been playing really good. Uh, so that helps. And plus, Leonard Fournette catches balls. He's a big, physical, fast back. He's playing great. And Ronald Jones is finally healthy. He's been nursing that groin injury and some other injuries he had. So with the fully healthy Ronald Jones and Fournette, I think they're going to really use the power running game here and kind of punish Kansas City. Obviously, you want to try to control time of possession and control the game here uh, and limit the exposure to Mahomes on the other side. So I look for a, a, a big dose of running from Tampa Bay here. And Brady's going to know when they have that that too deep look and the safeties like they did last game, he's going to know when to check into the proper running play. And I think they will win at the point of attack. And I think both those running backs are hot right now. So I, uh, Ronald Jones is obviously a lot cheaper. So I do like him, especially like on FanDuel, where you're not really relying on as many catches. So Ronald Jones is a good, is going to have, I think a good game here. He should be pretty popular because he's so cheap compared to Fournette. And he should get a similar amount, if not more carries on the ground. He just doesn't get as much work on the pass game. Um, the last game against him, he did catch a, like a 37-yard pass and took it down the sideline for a nice run, but that's a little more rare. Uh, but you never know. They might still try to do that with, with Rojo. So I like Ronald Jones here. He also typically gets more goal line uh, carries as well. He's a big you know, physical fastback. And then also Fournette is in play. I mean, uh, Fournette uh, obviously had an awesome run 
uh, last week when that, that touchdown run with the awesome spin move and taking on two defenders. And, you know, he probably, if he didn't have that one awesome run, though, he probably wouldn't have had a huge game. But, but Green Bay has been really tough against the run. They definitely shut down Ronald Jones last week or two weeks ago. Um, but I think both these guys are in play. It's just I don't know if I'm going to get up to the price point of Leonard Fournette. Um, just because I'm not expecting Tampa Bay to be down big like they did last time and have to pass the ball to running backs a ton. So I think that uh, they'll use the more physical on the ground running style of, of Ronald Jones more and then mix in Fournette as well. So that's why I probably prefer, prefer Ronald Jones. And then um, also got to talk about Antonio Brown. He's probably coming back. We don't know exactly how healthy he is, but if he gets a full practice in on like Friday, for example, that's probably a good sign. He's been limited here on Thursday. Antonio Brown, still one of the best in the game, and he has the potential to pop off at any time as well. And I think you're going to get him a little bit lower ownership because it's such, such, so highly questionable right now, but he is a little bit cheaper. So I think you can certainly play Antonio Brown. It's just a little bit higher risk. And then in terms of the, tight ends I prefer Gronk this week over Brait because I see a correlation here now that Antonio Brown's back they will probably run more three wide receiver sets which means less 12 personnel with less two tight end sets so Brait might not see the field as much now Cameron Brait will still see the field and still get a couple cast catches but not enough to have upside in my opinion now, where Gronk is pretty much going to be on the field all the time in all formations and Gronk does block a lot but he's also been running more routes. He he obviously was on the field more than Brait last week, even with AB out, and ran more routes. Now, he hasn't produced in a long time, um, but that's good. That's, to me, recency bias. And I think they're going to rely on Gronk with his experience in the Super Bowl and his rapport with Brady. I think Gronk actually does have a decent game. Now, not as good as last the last game against uh, – against Kansas City when he went for over 100 yards. But I think Gronk could potentially get somewhere around 60 receiving yards and a, and a touchdown because I think he is a big red zone threat. And that would be enough to get you there at a super cheap price there. He's like 6,500 FanDuel, 3,000 on DraftKings. So I do like Gronk here over Bray. And then, of course, I like the Tampa Bay defense, as I talked about. I think that they could get – they had two interceptions against Patrick Mahomes – last that last game in week 12 that were called back and negated by penalties and one of them was a was a ticky tacky uh you know rough in the passer penalty so tampa bay's defense is fast explosive playmakers and their pass rush is going to wreak havoc on the kansas city offense so that's why i like the tampa bay defense they're only 2800 on DraftKings and probably low ownership and i like the kicker here ryan suck up for Tampa Bay, just because I think it's they're, they're going to be involved a lot. Uh, I think Tampa Bay will move the ball, but also will be stopped in the red zone enough with that to kick a lot of field goals. So I know it's ugly trying to play defenses and kickers, but that's the way I see this game playing out. I don't think it's going to be a crazy high scoring game uh, like some people do. So that's why I'm looking at those guys. So a lot of good plays here. Like I said, I think a balanced approach with players from each team is the best way to go in my, in my opinion here. And I think they're looking pretty good. Or what do you think about the Tampa Bay side here, Andrew? You know, pretty similar. I, I I also like the balanced approach here. Brady certainly in play for me. You know, got well over 300 yards against the Chiefs, three touchdowns. Uh, he's been on on quite a roll here recently. If you look at the the passing game, uh, you mentioned you know the outside corners, Breland and Ward, and they've been terrific. And wide receivers fourth fewest fantasy points against Kansas City. So how do we beat them? Well, it's a little bit more over the middle. Go go in the slot. Go to Godwin. So he, he I agree, he will get the most targets, the most catches, most likely. It, you know, you can't uh, you can't ignore that Brady loves throwing it to Evans in the red zone to try to get those touchdowns. So Evans much more likely to score a touchdown. Uh, so it is a it is a tough balance between those guys. Uh, I, I lean towards Godwin, especially on DraftKings, like you said. On FanDuel, it is a, it's a tougher call, um, but I mean, I usually I usually lean towards Godwin there. Uh, Antonio Brown, though, he does change things, and uh, man, he could just be the X factor uh, because, like you said, he wasn't quite in the groove when these two teams met up before. But if he's close to 100, percent you know, Brady's got to be fired up about that, and that puts Kansas City at a major disadvantage to have Godwin and Brown out there using those skills. In terms of the tight ends, I also lean Gronk over Brait. The history between Gronk and Brady is incredible in the playoffs, in the Super Bowls. And, you know, he has been just a little bit off. He has gotten some end zone targets in the playoffs um, and, you know, hasn't had that big game. 
but he's just so close, and I think they will find a way to take advantage of that connection. Not to mention, you know, Bright being a little bit limited here on Thursday in practice. And the tight ends against Kansas City, sixth best matchup in the NFL. So that's why I lean towards Godwin and one of those tight ends. And with the running backs, you know, it is a much more, you know, divergent uh, choice here. You know, Kansas City, the guys are a little bit closer in price, those running backs, if you want to go with one of them. But major difference here with Fournette and Jones. So it's tough because, you know, Fournette seems to have gotten the trust of, of Tampa Bay here, getting more snaps, get, you know, getting those opportunities to catch, to catch balls. He did look great on that spin move, man. That was a lot of fun against Green Bay. Oh, yeah. uh, he's getting the, getting the receptions. But Jones, we know, has been a little bit limited with the quad. Seems like he's getting stronger and stronger. I thought he looked pretty good against Green Bay, even though they, they bottled him up, you know, in terms of just how he looked running it. Um, I like Jones at 2,200 on DraftKings. Yeah, he and, looked really good against uh, Kansas City last time, too, that last game. He only got nine carries, but he went for 66 yards because it was, a, yeah. he was he was game scripted out, but and he did here, look really good. Exactly. And if again, if you compare these backfields in that game, Tampa had 12 carries for 76 with Fournette and Jones. So over six yards per carry. Whereas CEH and Bell were 16 for 59, so under four yards per carry. So one more reason why, if if I'm only going to have one running back, it's probably going to be one of the Bucks this week. Uh, and that defense is in play. 2800. You just need one uh, pick six, and uh, you've you know you've paid off that that price tag for sure. Yeah, I expect a pretty good amount of sacks too. Like I said, they're gonna they're gonna be getting to Mahomes a lot, and he, like I said, he can only fade backwards so much. <laughs> He's really good at that, but they're they're gonna get to him, I think, in this game. Excellent. Well, uh, man, it's it's a little bit sad to say, but this is the end of the Super Bowl show here. So we we wrap up our season of coverage. Um, invite you to uh, let us know if you have any questions um, about this game, about showdown lineups, or. Uh, about membership again dfs coach talk on twitter if you could if you're watching on youtube hit that like button and subscribe uh, because with uh, the end of the super bowl that doesn't mean the end of our dfs coverage we grind out the nba every single day with uh, seven podcasts a week in front of the paywall so we hope you'll tune into those if you, if you haven't already and um oh by the way we just introduced a three-day membership option so if you want to jump in with us this weekend Go to our website, uh, pick up our three-day membership. We'll get you into Discord. You get all these lineups. Sheen, any final thoughts here for Super Bowl 55? No, I think it's the uh, same same thing I said on Championship Weekend, which was enjoy the game and appreciate it because, you know, we'll have a break of football after this and uh, really, uh, you know, enjoy the historical perspective and, and how amazing these games are that we get to watch them and don't take it for granted and I think you took my advice and enjoyed the championship weekend, didn't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> I think yes, you indeed. did. I, th I think you enjoyed it uh, more than probably most people. But that's my advice is enjoy the game and, uh, you know, get in here and uh, with these DFS lineups. And I l look forward to seeing everyone's big wins uh, for the Super Bowl and, uh, and really enjoying the game. And, uh, yeah, it's been great. I appreciate everything you've done this year. It's been great doing NFL with you. And I hope everyone keeps tuning in to listen to all our awesome, great content. But, yeah, it's been a great season. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So I uh, hope everybody has a, a great weekend here. Thank you again, Shane. Awesome season. And, uh, you know, we look forward to continuing here on uh, NBA, PGA and MLB going forward until we get football back again in the fall. So on behalf of Shane Caldwell and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. Thank you for joining us during this NFL season. And we'll see you in NBA as we look to crush it in DFS.